the goal of the Urban Fellows Program is to develop a collaboration between faculty at Pitt and faculty in other institutions, uh, K-12 institutions, uh, where we can feel like we're really training pre-service teachers to be successful in urban contexts. Uh, new teachers from the University of Pittsburgh working with some of the most highly effective teachers in Pittsburgh Public Schools. And these teachers uh, are referred to as CRIs, clinical resident instructors, as well as several other teachers who work with the program. In terms of their preparation work, it, we don't, the way our program works is we don't do prep work and then send them out into the field. They do work with us in the semester and they're also in the field at the same time. So in the early part of the semester, a lot of what they're doing is learning about some sort of basics of relationships in classrooms, um, how classrooms are structured, how you help students build disciplinary uh, behaviors so that they can engage productively in instruction. It's not just about coming up with tasks that are challenging for kids. It's about figuring out what are the social emotional needs of adolescents. How do you set up a classroom context where they're being supported so that they'll want to engage in those tasks, they'll be willing to take those intellectual risks? We're a big school. We have 1,500 students. Uh, we have neighborhood issues. We have um, a lot of the same issues uh, of, that other schools in our situation in, in urban environments have, issues with poverty. I personally went to a suburban school, so my experience, I thought, was definitely different from like an urban school experience, um, which in a way I've noticed it is, and in a way it isn't. Um, in an urban school, I, I expected there to be a lot of like behavior problems and um, just a different atmosphere than what I've noticed. I feel like, for the most part, like it's just like a typical high school. I think it, uh, no matter where the setting of the school is, kids have issues that they have to overcome. And in certain areas, it might be larger distractions, smaller distractions, and they might be bigger life issues. But you still have to help them overcome them and be aware of where they're coming from with them. They're working with really large classes. I have one intern who has a class of 40. This is ninth grade biology. Um, so we're asking them to engage kids in challenging tasks. It's really hard to manage 40 kids at one time. That's challenging. Okay, well I think, yeah, you're going to need maybe a little bit more patience because you're dealing with different cultures uh, in an urban setting um, as well, you know, as we, between the teachers and the students as well as between the students and the other students. So I think you need to be able to adapt your teaching strategies to the kids' needs. I think I know that I'm a lot different from a lot of my students, but I still think that we respect one another and we're able to work together. I really like my students. I think they're really great. So one of the things that I wanted to practice with our teachers was a different kind of listening, which we call just holding space, which is just listen and try to convey that you want to allow the person to share their thoughts and that you respect their thoughts, but you're not making a judgment. You're not trying to fix the problem they're sharing. You're just sort of respectfully listening and it's called holding space. And I asked them how hard that was to do and they're like, that's really, really hard to do. I don't like it. It's, it's uncommon. It's not comfortable. And then one of my students says, hey, I had a different experience. For me, it was fine, you know, because I'm married. <laughs> so, um, and it was, and I appreciated that.